Hi, in this quick video tutorial you will learn how to use Alloc to Digital Converter with a Raspberry Pi single board computer. We are going to attach microchip MCP3002 ADC to Raspberry Pi 4 and read data from it using a Python application. The sponsor of this video is PCBWay. PCBWay is famous for high-quality prototyping services. They can help you with manufacturing of standard, advanced and flex-printed circuit boards. PCBWay also offers assembly services. Furthermore, now PCBWay can even help you with CNC and 3D printing. Visit PCBWay.com to learn more and order now. For this particular video, PCBWay was kind enough to help me by sending 5 prototypes of a LED-free 2-layer printed circuit board designed with KiCad. This video is for the Raspberry Pi single board computer. It's not suitable for the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. When we are developing software applications for our computers, we are using digits like 0 and 1. However, not everything in the world around us is digital. A lot of the things are actually analog, for example sound or sensors like this soil moisture sensor or a potentiometer. In order to read data from this sensor and uh, potentiometer on our computer, we need a device called analog to digital converter. There are several different things to consider when you're making the decision which analog to digital converter to use for your project. Have a look at the resolution. The resolution defines the number of different values that the analog to digital converter can output. For example, 10 bit resolution means that uh, the analog to digital converter can retrieve 1024 different values. Also, have a look at the number of channels. This is the number of different analog devices which can be connected to the ADC. Different ADCs have different number of channels. For example, there are models with single channel, two channels, four channels, or even eight channels. Also, have a look at the communication interface. It defines the way you should connect the analog to digital converter to your embedded device, in our case, a Raspberry Pi. Microchip MCP3002 is an analog to digital converter with 10 bit resolution. It is dual channel and supports the SPI interface for connecting to a Raspberry Pi. The MCP3002 operates over a broad voltage range from 2.7 volts to 5.5 volts. For more details, have a look at the datasheet. This analog to digital converter has 8 pins one for ground, another for voltage in two pins for reading data from analog devices and the rest of the pins are for the SPI interface. The MCP3002 is offered in various packages. The DIP package is suitable for breadboard and initially we'll be using it for wiring to the Raspberry Pi. There is also a SOIC package which is convenient for mounting on a printed circuit board. In the second part of the video we will use this smaller package which is a for surface mount technology soldering. Let's start with the wiring. We'll need a Raspberry Pi, a breadboard MCP3002 in a suitable package for breadboard which means a dip package, a bunch of jumper wires and an analog device. In this case I'm using a potentiometer. This is a variable resistor which is very convenient for testing an analog to digital converter. As you can see on the Fritzing wiring diagram, I'm connecting the analog to digital converter to the dedicated pins for SPI communication on the Raspberry Pi header. I'm also connecting it to ground and to 5 volts coming out of the Raspberry Pi. The potentiometer is also connected to 5 volts and ground. The middle pin of the potentiometer is connected to one of the two channels for analog devices on the analog to digital converter. SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. This hardware bus specifies four logic signals, clock, master out slave in, also known as MOSI, master in slave out, also known as MISO, 
and Slave Select, which is also known as SS. There are dedicated SPI pins on the header of each Raspberry Pi single board computer. More details about the wiring of MCP3002 are available in the description of the video. If you have any feedback or questions, please leave a comment. Before we proceed with the next steps of the video tutorial, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hit the like button. Step number two is to enable the SPI bus on the Raspberry Pi. I'm using the Raspberry Pi OS, which is the official Linux distribution provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It includes a very convenient tool called Raspi Config. From a terminal, using this tool, I'm going to enable the SPI interface and reboot my board. Step number three is about the software. Using version 3 of the popular programming language Python, I have created a simple script for reading the data out of the two channels of MCP3002. The, this script is based on a SparkFun example and I have published it in GitHub. Open a terminal on your Raspberry Pi and download the source code. The easiest way to do it is to use Git and to clone the Git repository from GitHub. A link to it is available in the description of the video. The script relies on the popular Python module rpi.gpio. It will output the voltage from both channels of the analog to digital converter that we connected on the previous step. In the terminal, type in python3 space adc.py to launch the script. Congratulations! That's it! If you have completed these three steps, you have connected successfully MCP3002 to a Raspberry Pi and now you can give it a try. Here is my setup in action. I have a Raspberry Pi 4, the analog to digital converter on a breadboard and a potentiometer connected to one of the two channels of the MCP3002. On the back you can see a monitor with an open terminal where the Python 3 script is running. The potentiometer is an analog device that acts as a variable resistor. I'm using a 10K potentiometer and I recommend you to use the same value if you're doing the same experiment. As you can see in the video, when I move the potentiometer, the value read by the Python script changes between 0 and 5 volts. Let's do another quick test. I'm going to connect the same potentiometer to the other channel of the analog to digital converter. Using a breadboard is convenient for prototyping, however, the end result is bulky and there are a lot of wires. Thanks to PCBWay, the sponsor of this video, we are moving to the next level. I've designed a printed circuit board. This is an add-on board for Raspberry Pi and MCP3002. This board is called Anavi Gardening Micro Hat. It follows the Raspberry Pi Foundation specifications for hardware attached on top, also known as a Raspberry Pi hat. I have designed it using KiCad, a free and open source tool for designing printed circuit boards. After that, I've exported the Gerber files and PCBWay created prototypes for me. This board is using the SOIC package of MCP3002 and up to two analog sensors can be attached. Although the board is designed for attaching soil moisture sensors, in this video tutorial I'm going to experiment with two potentiometers. The value of the potentiometers will be again 10K. I have manually soldered all required components to the printed circuit board, so all I need to do right now is to connect it on top of my Raspberry Pi, then to connect the uh, sensors, in our case the potentiometers, and to turn on the Raspberry Pi. Again, here is pretty much the same setup for testing using a Raspberry Pi 4 and a monitor. However, this time, instead of using a breadboard, the MCP3002 analog to digital converter is on the brand new printed circuit board. Another difference is that this time I'm using two instead of one potentiometer, both of them are 10K. In the back, you can see the same Python 3 script, which is running and reading data from both channels of the ADC, which is showing the change of the values of both potentiometers. I think you understand the idea and using the same approach you can read data from more interesting analog devices, for example a capacitive soil moisture sensor which I plan to demonstrate in the next video. 
The Raspberry Pi single board computer does not have a built-in analog to digital converter. However, as you have seen in this video, it is relatively easy to attach an external ADC to the headers of a Raspberry Pi. I used a two-channel ADC. If you need to support more analog devices, consider using a four or eight channel ADC. Microchip has models with a very similar wiring. Furthermore, if you don't want to use a breadboard, you can purchase an add-on board for Raspberry Pi and make your life easier. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. There are many other videos related to Raspberry Pi, home automation, single board computers, and a lot of open source hardware gadgets. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for new videos.